Hello, hello, and welcome to today's lesson from the world's leading experts in confinement, our prison residents. Today's lesson comes more from their depth of expertise in discrimination and systemic injustice and disconnection with humanity. Because as, as I've observed over the past week, I've seen so many people create lists of actions to take to combat racism. And so many of these things on these lists are fantastic. But I feel like there's most of these lists, or many of them, miss the foundational step that actually provides the power and the resilience to the actions that take place. The fact of the matter is, in my belief, any sustainable, powerful transformation starts with this one first step. And the key word there is sustainable. If we're wanting to have this change actually last in the long term, it has to come from deep roots. And unfortunately, this first step is often overlooked because it's considered insignificant, not impactful enough. And this first step is to listen. To be curious with openness and non-judgment to all perspectives. To create a space where you're truly hearing what is actually being said. To be able to hold what John Paul Lederach calls paradoxical curiosity. Meaning being able to recognize that there are times when two truths that seem supposedly opposite can actually coexist at the same time. You know, to be able to listen without that rhetoric in our minds about what we're going to say or how it impacts us and what it means to us and wanting to fix or to judge or to condemn or find the guilt in there. And in our action addicted world, this can feel like too small of a step and insignificant and not doing enough, but I'll tell you it is doing enough. And here's why. Because people crave to be heard. I cannot speak for the looters that have been here across the country or across the world, but I'm gonna venture a guess that their breakage is due to at least in part to the fact that they feel unheard invisible, ignored, deemed irrelevant, insignificant. And so by listening, we create a space where they get to express themselves and therefore they no longer need to break to do that expression. Also by listening, it helps us to discern our accurate assumptions and perceptions and beliefs compared to our erroneous ones. It actually, like I say, actually molds the realities of our mind to better reflect the realities of our world. And in listening, we're also able to learn, better learn the needs of the other. Because you see, as we, as we probe behind what's first expressed, the needs that's first expressed, which, which usually tend to be quite superficial, we're able to get to the real core, deep reason, which is always the driver, the actual driver of behavior. And when we listen, well, it allows, it opens up a dialogue, which leads to understanding, which leads to relationship, which ultimately leads to connection. And therefore this person I might have deemed like an another is no longer someone that's distant or separate from me. And my choices and decisions start incorporating these people that before used to be outside my awareness. And when we listen and we think we've got it all, well, we get to listen some more. Because the fact of the matter is, it, that's when we hear the nuances and success and failure lies in the details. And so these understanding the nuances is what enables us to have and to create that success. And you see, when you've been able to do all this listening, you get to the deeper truth. So that when you do take action, well, the actions that you take from this deeper truth actually becomes so much more straightforward to alleviate and even undo the harm that was caused. When you come from that place of deeper truth, your actions actually solve the core problem. 
it's not a band-aid anymore. And so with listening, the anger that we have starts to fuel our compassion, which leads to a reconnection of humanity, which ultimately heals our society's cycle of violence. Because I'll tell you, once we reconnect with our humanity, it becomes really difficult to hurt another. So this week I invite you to experiment with that. And you can do so by sitting down today with a loved one and commit to this person that you're going to listen to them. Listen without interruption. And then you ask them to share a story of when they were discriminated against. Because I'll tell you, it's happened to all of us. And you listen to what they share. Fully listen. And when they're done sharing, you thank them for their courage in sharing. And if you have the courage within yourself, well, I invite you to use this week to up the ante and every day go talk to someone that is a little bit, you feel more distant to yourself. To end the week with reaching out to someone that you consider to be an other and ask them the same question and listen to them with the same depth and the same openness and the same non-judgment that you listen to your loved one at the beginning of the week. I can't wait to hear what comes of your experiment in listening and how it transforms the actions that you do choose to take. Have a brilliant day.